One of Betjeman's particular passions was 18th century topographical guidebooks, which were illustrated with aquatints. Enthralled, Piper booked himself a course of lessons at the Royal College of Art at the cost of 10 guineas, marking the start of a long journey, experimenting with and pushing the boundaries of printmaking techniques. In 1938, Piper visited Brighton. Inspired by the seaside, the architecture and ambiance, and his recent aquatint lessons, he illustrated and wrote his first book, Brighton Aquatints. Seaside nursery gaiety, the need for special seaside contrasts and differences. Brighton has these more than any other place. The, the great yellow and white facade of Brighton is ranged along the parade to face the incoming breakers. The piers, the bandstands and shelters, the Georgian and Victorian and Edwardian hotels and lodging houses all act up. The bow windows and porticos, all these keep up the seaside spirit. They make thousands of people remember Brighton and long to return to it. They are the proper background for popular English seaside life. The Regency architecture of Brighton is worth fighting for, not only because it's good Regency, but still more because it's good seaside. One of the earliest of Piper's forays into printmaking was the production of the 12 Brighton Aquatints. They were published as a collection in album form in 1939, just, just before the war and they showed views of Brighton and Kemp Town and elsewhere. An interesting thing about the Brighton Aquatint is of all Piper's work, I think this was the first which had original prints by Piper sold as a collection. At this time, Piper was attempting to adapt abstract art and the discoveries of Cubism into his own language a riddle he tried to solve during the next 20 years. John was also a pioneer, really, with John Betjeman again, and one or two others, in the serious appreciation of the Regency. And it was clearly Regency Brighton. It was the Brighton of the Prince Regent, and of course, perhaps first and foremost, the Royal Pavilion, um, which attracted him to that. He made Regency Brighton accessible again. One of the Brighton Aquatints of the whole 50 that were coloured, Betjamin had a go at watercolouring them. Those prints are particularly sought after these days for obvious reasons. Were they any good? They were all right for Betjamin. <laughs> <coughs> these were light, decorative experiments in a way, but it was a small edition, it was well reviewed, and it took off. <laughs> 